So I made a video a couple years ago explaining how you guys can make lower thirds and put it on your video editing program. But that video is a little bit outdated, so it's time to upgrade it. So welcome back to another video and today I'm going to be showing you how you guys can make your own custom lower thirds either saying like or subscribe or even a follow and how you guys can use it on any kind of video editing program. Today I'm going to be using Shotcut but this will work the same for any other video editing software that you may be using. So let's get started. So today we're going to be using Photopea which is a free photo editing program that you can use online. So you just got to go to photopea.com and this should pop up. So the first thing we're going to do is open a new project and then from there we're just going to name the project whatever we want to name it and the size and dimensions of it is basically going to be 1280 by 720 which is at default and we're going to change our background to transparent and we're just going to create our canvas so from here we're going to make a number of layers and we're going to head out to the file icon and just select open in place now this is going to open our documents and i'm going to be using a youtube png image that has a transparent background in order to make our lower third so now that i opened it you can see it's a transparent background and I'm just going to resize it to make it a little bit more smaller and appropriate size for a lower third. So after that, we're just going to head up to a different layer underneath that and we're going to be using our rectangle tool or our shapes tool and we want to make sure our fill is at red and I'm just going to mess around with the corner radius just to make it more of a circular square if that makes any sense to round off the edges and I'm just going to make it at a good sized dimension for this one. The next thing you want to do is select that same layer and right click rasterize and we're going to rasterize our YouTube icon layer as well and I just want to use the magic wand tool on the YouTube icon and just delete the center of the triangle and I'm just going to select on the whole icon make sure that the color is at white and I'm just going to use the paint bucket tool to turn the icon into a white color and as you can see I can just basically drag it on top of the little rectangle or square that we made and basically just try to position it at the middle so now that we got that I can come here to the icon tool and just right click and hit merge down and as you can see our square and the YouTube icon is in one image as well. From here I'm just going to go to my second layer and use the eyedropper tool to get the exact same red I'm using and from here I'm just going to create a second little rectangle. This one is going to be a little bit longer so we can put some text into that and I'm just going to try to position it to a length where it's much more appropriate but make sure to put this layer underneath the main icon. I'm just going to rasterize this layer as well and I'm just going to use the duplicate layer by right clicking and as you can see I made a second layer but we're going to change this one up real quick. I'm just going to go to the color icon and we're going to pick a much more blue or grayish color to it and you guys can mess around with whatever color scheme and whatever style you guys are looking for to make your lower third. This is basically all personal and a different style that you guys might want to use different color schemes or shapes but I'm just basically giving you an idea on what you can do or use it on. So now that I picked the color I'm using, I am just going to try to position it on top of the red rectangle. I'm just trying to show a little bit red at the tip and trying to get it perfectly centered. So the next step is actually using our extra layer, or if you don't have a layer, just make a new one and put it all the way on the top right underneath the icon layer. And we're just going to use the text tool. Now this is where we're going to write whatever you guys would like to write. So I'm just going to use the white text. And from here, I am just going to pick the font of my choice. Now, Photopea does offer for a number of fonts but I'm actually going to use a custom font that I actually downloaded off of thefont.com. Now these are free fonts that you guys can actually visit and choose whatever font you want but you can also choose the fonts that Photopea actually offers at default whatever works with your style of lower third but I will leave the link in the description in case you want to get the exact same font as I have in thefont.com. So the font I'm using is the big noodle tilting and I am just going to adjust the size of the text so it can be read easily easily and for now I'm just gonna write down subscribe or something like that and you guys can do anything else like like the video or follow me on any other social media platform but for now I'm just gonna do the subscribe and what you want to do is basically make it in an appropriate size so it can be easily read and just adjust any other details that you guys want to add to your lower third as well so this is the end result of the lower third that I want to be using but now it's time to export this file however I am gonna do something different we're actually gonna add an 
animation to this on Shotcut or whatever other video editing software that you guys are using. So what we're going to do is actually export these as separate parts. So I'm just going to use the little eye icon to shut all the other ones down and just export them on PNG. So just go to file, export as and choose the PNG format. We're going to be exporting these separately and we're just going to do the same process for the text and for every other graphic that we have made. So the text, it's going to go right along with the blue rectangle that we made and those two are going to be exported together. And finally, we're going to export the red rectangle, which is going to be separately. So you should have three different PNG exports and remember to export these as PNG so it doesn't have any background. Now, if you guys are adding different graphics to it or you're using a different style and you have a different number of graphics, well, you can just export all those separately too. So you guys can know what kind of animation you want to apply to it. So before we start, I do want to say that we're going to pick this up a little bit and actually add some slight animations to this. So it's not a static image on your video when this lower third appears. So we're just going to add some spice to it and we're just going to add a few animations to this just to make it a little bit more polished. Okay guys, so we're in Shotcut right now and I already imported all the files that I'm going to be using. Basically the files that we have exported from Photopea with all our graphics to make our lower third. So I'm just going to go to the timeline and I'm just going to make sure to add three video tracks separately for our three graphics that we just made. From here, I am just going to use the first icon that we just made with the YouTube icon and put it all the way to the first track. And then I'm just going to use the rectangle with the subscribe text on it as my second track and the red rectangle all the way at the bottom. So it just doesn't cover each other up. So it's neatly put into layers in a way that you can see all three of them. So now basically all we have to do is just align it separately and just make the actual actual clips as long as you want to, depending on how long you want your lower third to be visible on your video. So for now, I am just going to make another track underneath all of these and I'm just going to put a transparent layer. Now this is going to be temporary. I'm not going to keep that transparent layer all the time. I'm going to remove it later on and probably replace it. So I am just going to go to the file, open other, and I'm just going to pick on the color and just keep it default because it says transparent and I just hit OK. And I can basically click and drag out of the previous screen all the way to the bottom track where I'm going to have my transparent layer. So as of now, I am just going to use the little eye icon to basically mute these layers down so I can just be working at one layer at a time. So I'm just going to mute the both rectangles and just keep the icon layer ready so we can add our filters to it. So what you want to do is basically select on the icon layer that you have. For me, it's the first track. Select that, go to filters, and we're just going to go to the video tab for the filters. Then we're going to be looking for a filter called size and position. This will give us a little bit of an animation to it so it can just be more interactive. Now that we have opened or size and position filter, we're going to go all the way to the top bar where all the icons are at and we're going to be choosing keyframes. This will open a separate window and I already have my default to go underneath my filters tab. So you guys may be able to mess around to give more space and just adjust the space in different windows. So make sure that you still have the icon that you're using to edit selected. For us, that's being the YouTube icon and we're going to have our keyframes timeline open so we can add some animations like I said before. So I'm just going to put the play header all the way to the beginning and I'm going to come here to the size and position filters and I'm just going to put it at distort. Now I know there's different ways to do this but I found this is the easiest way for me to do it at least. So I'm just going to go to the preview window, select on that little circle till it gives you that cursor where you can basically drag it down all the way down as much as possible. So now that I dragged it all the way in the bottom and if we hit play we can see that the icon is not visible. So we're going to be adding an animation to this. So I'm just going to put the cursor a little bit more forward and we're going to set the position to zero zero. This will basically set it at default. And if we put the cursor all the way back and we just apply a little bit of a overlay or a time stamp to that and just basically mess around with the settings of that, we can get this smooth animation where the icon basically slides up from the bottom. And this is basically how you can see where the size and importance of how we basically set it up on PhotoP comes into place. So we can't really mess around with the position of it because it's already centered to where we want it based on how we designed it on Photopea. We basically have it all the way to the left, a little bit higher than the corner to the left. So I'm just going to be leaving it at that position. And you can see we can play around with it, basically mess around with the keyframes so we can get that smooth animation that comes from the bottom up. And keep in mind that you guys can pause wherever because I know this is a little bit of a long tutorial, but a lot of things can go wrong if you just miss a little single step. So I want to make sure I'm taking my time to explain everything correctly. 
So now that we are done animating our first layer, our first icon, we're going to go down to our third track to where the red rectangle is at. And basically we're going to choose that, go to filters and go again to the size and position filter. And you can see that our keyframes is still there as well. And we're just going to unmute it by hitting that little eye icon. And we are just going to preview it real quick. So as you can see that rectangle just pops out so we want to add a slight animation to that. Now I do want to pause here for a second in saying that I space these out according to the timing of the animation. So as soon as the icon first starts animating and it stops, well that's when I put the rectangle graphic ready to be animated. So you just want to be sure that you time it correctly and that's why I left gaps in the timeline. As you can see with each graphic and each track, I left some gaps so I can give it some time to finish its animation and go to the next graphic so as you can see i'm just going to put the cursor on the beginning of the red graphic track not the beginning of the timeline but the beginning of where that track starts then i'm just going to go to the preview window and do exactly the same thing i'm just going to drag it all the way to the left as possible and just try to keep it as centered as possible so as you can see we're messing around with our keyframes and i'm just putting the cursor a little bit more ahead and working with the size and position so again i'm going to put the cursor a little bit ahead and just set the position to zero zero this will put it at a default position and basically use the timing layer so we can get that smooth animation and this is basically trial and error so just find the settings that basically work for you now if we hit play we can see that the animation is basically sliding in perfectly in the center of our icon so you can basically adjust the duration of that slide depending on what speed you guys want so i can just replay it over and over again and just making sure that the size and position is correct so at the beginning of the cursor i'm just moving it all the way to the left so no one can see it then i'm just going to go to size and position and set it for zero zero then this little overlay toggle i'm just putting the duration of that animation so it's a pretty simple process but i know it can be a little bit confusing at first now that we're done with the animation process of the red rectangle portion, I'm just going to go back to the plus button to the filters and I'm just going to apply a mask simple shape filter. This will help us mask certain parts of the rectangle when it comes out in animation. But first, I do want to go back to that transparent layer that I made in the beginning of the video and basically just replace it with a green screen so we can see that mask a little bit more better. So I'm just going to go to the last track on our video on our transparent black background and basically I'm just going to delete it. From there, I'm just gonna go to file open other go to color and just use a green color just to make it like a green screen so when we remove the background it can be much more easier and then from there we just hit okay and basically we're just going to do the same process we're going to drag it out of the previous screen and onto our last track where our transparent background used to be so as you can see that applied itself and we can see that little black box in the middle which is our mask that we're going to be using and make sure you still have the red rectangle selected to when you're making these adjustments in these filters so make sure that you have the red rectangle and from here we're just going to press the keyframes filter again and we're just going to switch over to the mask and simple shape filter here we're going to be making some adjustments so we can clear that piece overall now from here i am just going to be using some settings that i've been messing around with that works pretty well for me so we're going to be in the mask filter and for our operation we're just going to leave it at minimum our shape we're just going to leave it default at rectangle now if i'm going too fast feel free to pause at the end of this section so you can get all the numbers and all the settings correct. So this is basically concerning on my graphic design on how I positioned it, but I find these settings to work really good to mask that layer. Now, if you position yours in a different way, you might have to do some adjustment to these mask settings according to how you're animating your lower third. But these are the settings that I found to work really well with this configuration of animation with this lower third. So here are the settings, pause if you need to. And as you can see, we can hit play and you can see that the actual rectangle is actually coming out from the icon itself and not from the screen like it used to so I know that was kind of slow but you can see that the bar is basically being masked out from sliding in from the actual screen and it's basically appearing like it's coming out of the icon itself so that's why I like to apply this mask so you can have a more clean animation so now we're basically done applying all the filters that we're going to be needing for the red rectangle. Now we're going to be applying the same exact filters to the subscribe text and to the blue rectangle that's attached to that. So in order to make this process a little bit simpler and faster, what we're going to be doing is making sure that you have selected your red rectangle graphic or whatever graphic you're using and just go to here to the copy icon that we can see beside the filters. So we're going to select on the copy icon, go to our blue text rectangle 
Rectangle, basically our second track, and basically just go back to the filters and hit the paste filters. And then from there we can unmute the track so we can see our graphic design. So if I hit play, the animation plays out perfectly. And you can see that there's a slight delay. You can basically mess around with that based on your personal preference, but I kind of like that. So it, you can see all the different layers that goes into making this lower third. But like I said again, it all requires timing and spacing. So you can basically mess around with the tracks and the spacing and basically the speed at which the lower third appears in your video. So that's what I'm doing right now. I am just going to adjust these graphics. So if I hit play right now, you can see that the red graphic comes a little bit too early. So I'm just going to tone it back a little bit and drag it back, leaving more space for the icon to finish its animation. Now that you adjusted it, we can close this keyframes window and so we can have a better look at what we're dealing with. So I adjusted everything and as you can see if I hit play all the animations play perfectly well into each other. Now it's a little bit slow but when you export it it's going to be really smooth. So I'm just going to zoom out so we can see what we're basically dealing with and I just want to make all the tracks the same size as you can see there's some gaps in between but we want to make those tracks all the same size to last the same duration. So now we have finished animating on lower third and the last step is basically exporting it. So we can hit the export tab here or the export icon on the top. And from here we can mess with all these custom presets, but I just usually use the custom preset unless if you have quick time animation, which can be helpful use. But I know that not everyone has quick time animation. So I'm just going to be using the custom presets and the format is going to be MOV. And then from there, everything else is going to be default. So make sure that you have choose the custom preset the format is mov and then we just hit export file leaving everything else default and basically name your lower third into the folder that you want to so you don't forget it and we're just gonna export it and save it and as you can see the export process has started and it's on its way to export our lower third so the next thing i'm going to be showing you is how you guys can add it to a video that you're editing so let's jump into that so sorry for interrupting but i just came back from looking at my analytics and i saw that most of you guys who watch my videos aren't subscribed so like what happened if you guys enjoyed the video consider subscribing because more content is on the way but yeah let's get back to the video so we're in shotcut with a new project and i basically have a normal clip and my lower third so i'm just going to go to the timeline and add two video tracks for this so this is the same process that you would use if you're editing one of your videos as usual for the bottom track i am just going to drag in my video clip which can be the main clip for you but for now i'm just using a random video clip and i'm just going to put it onto my bottom track then my lower third, I'm just going to drag that and put it on the top track. And as you can see, if I put the little playhead at the top, you can see that all we can see is the green background with our lower third. So in order to fix this, we're just going to go to filters and we're just going to go to the chroma key filter that we're going to be looking for. So we're just going to select on the chroma key advanced filter. And then from there, we can use the little eye marker tool and basically select on the green background of our video. And as you can see, it basically keys out and all we can see is our lower third with a transparent background. So if we hit play, we can see that the animation actually plays perfectly. And this is what you can expect when you're animating a lower third and putting it onto your video. However, we're not done yet. So what we're going to do is make sure that you have selected the lower third and we're just going to go back to filters and add one last filter to this thing so we can finish our lower third. So we're just going to use the fade out video so it can basically fade out and having a nice effect to it. So I'm just going to check the adjust opacity instead of fade with black. And basically what you can do is just put whatever timing you want in order to set the time whenever you want your lower third to fade out. So it gives that little effect so it just doesn't pop out when the animation is finished it can actually fade out into something nice and then from here we can basically adjust the size and duration of the actual lower third clip so it's not as distracting and it takes too long so as I hit the play button, you can see that the lower third doesn't last for a very long time and it fades out quite nicely. So you guys can basically adjust it by going all the way to the end and just adjust it how long you want your lower third to appear in your video. So now you guys know how you can make a lower third and add an animation to it onto Shotcut. Now I hope this video helped you out, but if you guys are looking for more tutorials, well you've come to the right place because I have a playlist full of tutorials for you guys that you guys can use in order to level up your video editing skills on shotcut i also have different tutorials in order to increase your quality of your channel and the quality of your videos as well now i hope this video helped you out if you guys have any more suggestions leave them down in the comments or let me know on twitter but that's pretty much it for today's video thank you guys for watching and i'll see you on the next one